Great catch. What a catch! Oh, oh, oh. oh my goodness. What an amazing catch from Vicky McFarlane. The highlight reel. Never say never. Say yes to the jest. That was fantastic. Oh. Sarah Sorkin making a push for home. This is 400 herself. 13 strikeouts for Gabby Snyder and one of the best pitching performances we've seen this season. What a fantastic grab by Emma Burridge. He climbs the ladder and breaks it down. Bounce this up the middle, that's gonna score a run. Oh, it scored two. Deep to left field, this is back, and this one is gone! It's magic from Madeline! Good evening and welcome to softball action here at Softball SA. James Harris and here joining me this evening is Kathy Lambert and with all your statewide super special comments, it's Mark Cram. Welcome Kathy and Mark. Thanks James. It's looking like it's going to be a really good game tonight. What a perfect night to be out here at uh, Softball SA down at West Beach. It's probably about 26 degrees I'd say. Maybe a little bit warmer but absolutely no breeze so potentially some, seeing some uh, hits over the fence tonight. Uh, good evening, everybody, and yes, welcome. What a beautiful night it is, Kathy. Uh, quite warm, t-shirts on, everyone relaxed and ready to play. Um, we're bringing you live coverage and all the replays across the following platforms tonight. Live streaming highlights the big plays on Softball SA Facebook page, YouTube, and Instagram. For those that want to catch the action at home, from the comfort of your own couch, hopefully with the air conditioning on, replays NITV, which is channel 34 on SBS and 144 on Foxtel, Sundays at noon, and channel 44 SA Community TV on Saturday afternoons, and that's all thanks to Softball SA and Spacequake Sports. Thanks very much, Mark, and to our broadcast partner, Statewide Super and MC Sportswear. Well, tonight's clash, Kathy and Mark, is against Walkerville Cats, last year's champions against the Sturt Falcons. And they also are recent champions in this competition who can forget their four championships in a row. Uh, it was Walkerville in the end that uh, took the, the title. And uh, we'll get an opportunity to go through their lineups in a moment. Uh, Sturt Falcons just completing their five minute Diamond warm up. Um, Kathy, you've got the Walkerville lineup for us, so we'll quickly run through their batting lineup. Okay, so we've got a couple of changes here. Karen Dale's leading off uh, uh, the batting lineup, followed by little speedster Haley Benithan. Desi Dumorellis is in third, and Sophie King is p playing in the cleanup position. Chelsea Robinson moves down to the fifth position, followed by Steph Collette, a Ashley Mirkin, and Erin Reed is going to be a DP. And finishing off the lineup is Michaela Robinson. Now, not on that list is the flex player, of course, and pitcher for Walkerville. The best kept secret in all of softball, it's something that we're always uh, interested to know, is who Walkerville's pitcher is going to be. And she's arrived, Kathy. She has. So her name is Jessie Dresick, and she comes all the way from Boston College, where she was a pitcher for them from 2015 to 2018. Um, with a season's best, uh, two, uh, average best of 2.64 ERA. Um, she's very tall. Well, it'll be interesting to see her in action. It's our first look at her this season, and she fills the pitching role, but uh, not in a, in a hitting role this year. We, we saw last year's pitcher, uh, Gabby Schneider, of course, dominate from the stripe and also in the batter's box, but uh, this gives an opportunity for... Uh, another uh, player to step up, of course, and so we'll be interested to see how Jessie goes this year. We wish her all the best of luck. So, um, opportunity now to go through the Seacombe defence. Uh, Mark, do you want to help us uh, through that, mate? Yes, yeah, so I've got the Sturt lineup tonight. We've got uh, Ada Cavana, uh, Pippa Atkins, then d through to Bell White, Sarah Tonkins, uh, Jessie Kesh, uh, Jordan Lee, Millie Fidge is the DP. Laurent Fleming, down to Lily Rashid, and then Zali Adams. The, um, we got Belle White playing at shortstop again tonight. She's on the screen now, um, which is um, giving uh, Sarah Tonkin uh, another run behind the plate, and they're doing quite well, that combination, James. Yeah, so massive out, of course, for the Falcons. Is their centre fielder, Mark? Yeah, Maddie Cameron's away with the Aussie team, um, looking, uh, looking to play quite well over there. I think that'll be a big loss 
uh, for Sturt tonight, coming up against the new unknown pitcher that Walkerville have got. It'll be an interesting battle, but I think the lineup that Sturt's got should be able to handle it, but it is a big loss, James. Yeah, Matty Cameron, uh, best of luck to her. She'll play in the Japan Cup debuting for the Aussie Spirit this weekend, so she'll be uh, missed, of course, tonight for the Falcons. Uh, we're underway now, and it's Zali Adams pitching to leadoff hitter for Walkerville, Karen Dale. So Zali Adams starts off low and ball one for Karen. Now we saw Walkerville a couple of times so far this year, Kathy, and Karen's been down the order a little bit. So uh, a surprise move, or maybe she's definitely in form. Yeah, I've seen a couple of games, and she's had some really big hits. She's, I would definitely say she's in form. Um, that 800. 800 game uh, record is uh, uh, set to be broken, uh, set to be added to this year the way she's playing. So, um. crushes this one foul. It's a long ball. Uh, it is in foul territory, so a long strike. And gee, Karen's come out aggressive here for the Cats. One ball and two strikes the count. Uh, countdown clock tonight, uh, we can see on the, on the vision. We'd normally start out from, uh, from zero, but. It is a 90-minute game. Just a check swing from Dale, fouling it off, remaining in the count. Uh, Zali, of course, has been doing a little bit of pitching since her return from Japan and uh, an Aussie Diamonds tour with the uh, a youth squad, an under-16 squad. So a couple of teammates from South Australia visited with her and great pitch. She's hit the bottom of the zone there and. And Coach Morgan Young would be definitely happy about that one. A first, a lead-off strikeout for Zali Adams. Always great to get that first batter out, and um, yeah, that'll, that'll help uh, Zali's confidence as well um, uh, as she moves away through the lineup. Nerve settling. We're sure of that. Next hitter, fouling this one off. Next hitter for the Cats is Haley Benithan. So, Kathy, you introduced her as the speedster, and and she definitely has got some wheels. She's uh, one of the uh, the faster runners in the competition and uh, if she can get on base hopefully we can see some more action around the diamond and around the bases and see her stealing. Yeah, absolutely. Haley was uh, part of the speed program that Sopol SA ran last year and in all the testing uh, with all the, the um, members of the program um, Haley was um, very, very quick and only, only just, um, just a bit tad behind Jordan Lambert. So that gives you a bit of an idea about the speed that she has. So she fouls that one off and two strikes is the count. So Adams gets ahead of the count and, and Benithan fouls that one off and stays alive. Uh, Mark Cramp with statewide super special comments. We're going to go around the grounds so to speak when we get some updates from the other game being played tonight between the Hills Heat and the Port Magpies. Mark have you got a score update for us there? Uh, we have got is it's the um, oh, this just throws that high there James. It's the end of the first and Hills lead 1-0 so that should be uh, a close game. You can see the Hills have already taken a run off uh, Sutherland Finch so that'll be interesting to see how their battery goes over in Diamond 2. I'll keep an eye out and uh, update as much as I can. Statewide super special comments. Thanks to Mark Cram. And a great change of pace. <laughs> Zali Adams with a second victim. A strikeout on a change up. Just caught the batter in two minds, Kathy. Oh, she is, uh, yeah, she's just putting him in a position where it's making it really difficult for those batters to, uh, to make a decision. It's, it's just right on the edges there. It's a great pitch. So Desi G. Morellis is the new hitter for the Cats and watches that one through for a strike. Uh, the battle of the pitch is going to be very important, isn't it? Now that we, we've got the, the international player for the Cats, uh, Zali's going to play a vital role for the Falcons tonight. Well, James, she's just thrown that... Um when she comes in again, that's up a bit high. She's thrown that, strike, uh, she's thrown that change up twice for two successive strikeouts. So we may see that earlier in the game than we thought. Swing and a miss from uh, Gia Morales. Another great pitch. She's, she's uh, not, not taken too much time to get herself into this game. She started from the very first pitch, Sally. That's, that's great to composure for somebody so young. And Desi takes a good swing at that, fouls it off over to the third baseline. 
Well, she was nice and early on that one, Kathy. She's seeing the ball and she's not afraid to swing it. She's, she's seeing it, but she went up with it, but pulled it very early. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, what we get out of Zali this time. We know it's that she gave that change of, change of pace pitch before with the other two batters, so let's see what happens here. And there it is again. There it is again. Well done. Well, you called it, Kathy. We said we saw it early in the first two. The third strike was a change up. It worked again. You can see it pushing it into the back of her hand there. Keep an eye out for that. She's pushing it in. I don't want it to telegraph it, but it's worked for three batters. So well, good, well, well done. Good on her. It has, and it's and it's really, um, it's just slightly off pace, isn't it? it makes it really difficult to, uh, to to make a decision about. And now we're going to have a first look at our the new import from Walkerville, Jessie well, Derwick. She's been throwing the ball from the coach with a wry smile as they as she walks back to the dugout. So it'll be interesting to see how we go. And just you can, Sorry, Kathy. Yeah, you can see the, the size, the, the height that she's got on the, even when she's up on that uh, pitcher's diamond as well. And apparently she had a bit of a career in basketball, and that certainly doesn't surprise me. No surprise from the height as we watch her do a couple of warm-up pitches. Um, we're going to have to uh, do a little bit of research. Now that we know who she is, we can do a little bit of research. We might try and find out how tall she really is. Coming in at a height is definitely going to be uh, an advantage. Uh, for the pitcher and uh, hearing that she had a career in basketball is no, sur no surprise at all. So just around the the Cats infield or, or the, the whole defensive lineup, just not sure where you're going to find room for one of our young stars of the competition, Sophie Roberts. She's She's not in full uniform tonight, and uh, and so she'll definitely be one to come back into the lineup. But uh, gee, this this Walkerville Cats lineup defensively looks great, don't they? Yeah, they absolutely do. And and you're right. If if a player of the quality of Sophie Roberts is uh, struggling to get in the lineup, that that tells you something about this team. And they always do a really good job at putting on a strong team, Walkerville. Well, to get things going for the Falcons is Ada Caruana, so a very experienced campaigner to face Dressick for the first time, and she's right in there with the first pitch for a called strike. I'm sure most, uh, most people will be checking this picture out, most people from the other teams. Trying to, trying to see where her favorite pitchers are, pitches are and um, what type of things she does with the, the ball. So it goes ahead of the count early, Dressick. We might even have to check the pronunciation, but we'll run with Dressick at the moment. Two strikes and Caruana fouls that one off. So these two teams are actually vying for a top four spot at the moment. Walkerville just outside the four. Uh, in fifth place, both teams played five games, so early days in the season, two wins and three losses for the Cats, and three wins and two losses for the Falcons, as Caruana fouls that off again and keeps herself alive. Two strikes still the count. Early wins uh, are vital. I mean, we saw Port Adelaide last year come home with a wet sail, but it was a little late, their run. Uh, so early wins, very important. Yeah, I don't, I don't think um, it, it, any any team can make, you know, work their way into the season. I think it, it's, it's going to be a relatively even competition. And, um, you know, it's very important to get the, the wins on the board from, from the get-go. And Ada's staying in here really well, fouling each of those balls off. Yeah, I, I, Ada's seeing it very, very, very early, and she's staying in there, pushing the ones that she doesn't like away. Be interesting to see if she gets a full swing here, though. Caruana once again, swing and a foul. So, faced about five, six pitches so far, and fouling off the majority of them. Mm -hmm. So, five foul balls so far for Caruana, and always great to have the support of the scoring team to our right and uh, that will help bring some of the stats throughout the evening and the rest of the season. Great eyes from Caruana and watches that one through for a ball. Well she stayed off that gym that was going up a little bit high for her. She, she's, she's picking the right ones to swing at. She's just got to get that speed up a little bit. As 
Jurassic goes through this game, we'll be able to get a good look at her weapons. And Caruana will lead things off with a single up the middle. Steph Collette horizontal, diving to her left, her glove side, and it may have nicked her glove, but uh, I'll call that one a single because that was beyond ordinary effort. Let's watch the statewide super replay. Great effort. And uh, no, no surprise, um, the, the speed of the hit is followed by the speed of Ada's legs running to first. She is, she is a very quick runner, and um, you know any little hit is going to put pressure on the, the defensive team to, Aboard. to field it and get her out quickly. Aboard safely, and to hit her for the Falcons is Pippa Atkins, who did a little bit of work earlier in the season in the lead-off position, but with veteran Caruana back in the lineup, she will uh, make way any day, you'd think, for Caruana. And Atkins backs it up with a great shot to left field. Great attempt from the speedy, but nice and diving, oh. throws over to third base, and Caruana slides in under the tag. Great start by the Falcons. What a great, uh, great hit and good uh, uh, aggressive base running by both Pippa and, and Ada. Very controlled slap hit from Pippa Atkins. Uh, hit opposite field and Carol Warner just takes advantage of that slide error. Yeah, well, the slide error there was a little bit, um, uh, it, it, I think it was a great attempt at catching the ball. The, my issue there was that she sort of hesitated in throwing the ball to third and the base runner took advantage of that straight away. Now, all credit to the batters. We're seeing, we're seeing balls come down at 104, 105, 106 kilometres an hour, Cathy. And these girls are getting the bat around quick enough to make contact. They're not trying to knock the ball over the fence. They're making contact and legging it out. And I think that's one of the key, uh, key new initiatives that Coach Morgan Young has brought to the team. He's, he's really focusing a lot on just this uh, short hitting game as opposed to a big power game. And, and you can see it paying off for those first two batters. Well, Dressick with a work cut out for her now. No outs, two runners in scoring position. And up to bat is Australian Spirit representative Belinda White. Now, she watches that one through for a called strike. Um, Belinda White will, you'd think, be up to the challenge. She's come back to form after a bit of a month off with a break and it's been on fire for the Falcons. And part of the reason why their winning record is 3-2 and two at the moment. Yeah, the regular triples throughout her games, and I think I watched a, a game a couple of weeks ago. She actually had two triples in the game and a double, so she's uh, she's really on fire with the bat at the moment. One and one, the count. And Belinda White just hits that one over to first base and will score the run. Scores the run. It was a, an interesting shot, maybe off the end of the bat and first base play. Karen Dale just. Didn't get a good read of it, got a glove to it, kept it in front to try and stop that runner from scoring. Uh, unfortunately, just got away from her, and we see on the replay screen that Pippa Atkins arrives to third base safely, but we miss the runner scoring, crossing the plate. That's Ada Caruana for the first run of the game. Well, she was quick, James. You said that, uh, Kathy said that at the start of the game. She snuck down there when everyone was looking at the play at first base. But do you see the difference between uh, someone like the experience of Bell White, who went after the ball at 105 k's now, went after it and pushed it down there? Probably wasn't her greatest swing. She wouldn't be the happiest with it, but she's at first and she scored a run. Yeah, she hit it really hard, so uh, just forced that error um, from first baseman Car Karen Dale. Um, and, and Ada looked like she was running from the get-go. There was nothing going to be stopping her. Belinda White takes off on the pitch and a good cut-off play from Desi G. Morellis. White will stand up safely on second base, so the runners from one and three advance to runners at two and three, so runners back okay. into scoring position. And Sarah Tonkin, the hitter for the Falcons, will try to keep this ball rolling. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah usually a very consistent batter. Um, so, so, yeah, feeling pretty confident that she'll be making things happen here with two runners on second and third. Well, credit to Dresick. She's still going at her tray here. She's uh, thrown the ball hard into the strikes and ahead of the count here for Tonkin. Fouling that one off and staying in the count. So from both sides of uh, the game, both Walkerville and the Falcons, we've seen the batters just stay in there. They're, they're, they're protecting the zone. They're, uh, they're staying alive in the box and in the count. Yeah, absolutely. Not, not getting uh, too sucked in by any pitches. You know, they're being really patient and waiting for their pitch and fouling off anything they really don't like. So um, it's a really good sign. Um, and... Uh, should be, make for an exciting game if it continues with lots of runs scored. 
Well, that was the big difference that we were talking about, the young Seacombe side, James. They were chasing the ball early, weren't they? These guys are being patient and waiting for their pitch. And Tonkin very patiently waiting on that pitch, which was outside, and good call from World Softball Hall of Famer Neville Lawrence, who's played umpiring. We've got Michael Bendel at first base, and if I can, just a strikeout. Great pitch there from Dress. It gets her first victim. Kathy, that's going to settle some nerves. Absolutely, and and that's exactly what they were looking for, and and hopefully that. For, for Walkerville, that's going to be a sign of, of the times to come for them. Um, but there's no doubt that Sturt are going to be wanting to do something with these two runners on base. One out in the bottom of the first inning, and it's Jesse Keach, the new hitter for the Falcons. Lived out a bit of a uh, dream for most players, hitting a walk-off home run a couple of games ago. Uh, in the park, home run it was, she beat it out. Yeah. Has a bit of a check swing at that one for a strike. Uh, it was Ian Gray is our blue over at third base. So our team of three blues uh, doing a great job so far. Yeah, it's, and, and for these youngsters that are doing so well and all. Keith gets a piece that's of this ball. going to drop short of the centre field of Michaela Robinson. Pippa Atkins is going to score. The throw comes into the cutoff. Bell White advances to third base. Jesse Keach aboard with a safe hit. An RBI single for Keach. Her impressive season continues. A Stater under 17 representative. Just dropping short of one of the better outfielders in the competition for mine so far this year in Michaela Robinson. So one out, two aboard for the Falcons and two runs early in the game. And another great example of that short game and, and how all it takes is one hit, one run, you know, nothing nothing too big. And, and you can see with the 2-0... Two -nil, score line, two -nil yeah. score line. Kathy, you said it before about uh, Coach Young's uh, new look, style, his patience in the batting box. And it's... it's we can see we a delayed steal play here for the Falcons. Great running from Jesse Keach, draws the play, and then Belinda White has the option to uh, perhaps sneak home, but she decides to stay. It was great pickup and a, a very impressive throw from Chelsea Robinson. Experience from Bell White there, playing a little bit of cat and mouse. They had, the, they had him pinned at second base there, and Bell took off and took the eye off. So a um, bit of experience there. Statewide super special comments thanks to Mark. Jordan Lee gets herself into the count here. Three balls, so runners at second and third again, and Jordan Lee with a good opportunity uh, to get another base runner for the Falcons. Jurassic just waiting for a signal there, and Jordan Lee has a big cut at that one. Now, this is a conversation that I've had many times with Eric and with Lee, swinging with 3-0. Green light, James. Green light. You know it's going to be a very good pitch. That was 106 kilometres an hour down the middle. You know you can't get much better than that, can you? Jordan Lee agrees with you there, Mark, and she swings at another one. So her three and zero count goes to three balls and two strikes. Forever a um, debate within softball <laughs> swinging on three and zero. Well, just let me reiterate: if he would have kept it, it still would have been a full count now because it would have been right down the middle. It would have been a strike anyway. So might as well have a cut at it. Jordan Lee swings at her third consecutive pitch and fouls that one off, staying alive in the count, remains full. I'm pretty impressed, James and Mark, about these uh, youngsters in this in this A-grade competition. In it, up against a brand new pitcher who's absolutely throwing some really fast balls, and and there's no sign of any nerves or pulling away from the the, the, the pitch at all. They're right in there, ready to have a hit. Well, they're actually going after it, Kathy, aren't they? They're actually not overawed by it at all. They're actually looking at it going, we'll bring it, and I'll swing it. Well, she got her, got her there with a very, very nice pitch, 104 kilometres an hour, clipped the corner. It was a good out. So that good out for the second out. That's two K2s. Well, that's a KC, that one in the uh, in, in the innings. But um, Sturt won't be overawed by that. Well, no disrespect to Dressick either. Let's not forget, she's only landed in the country in the last 24, 48 hours. So uh, what a good cut from... The new hitter in the Sturt lineup, it's DP Millie Fidge. I uh, haven't seen her much so far this season, so she was uh, 
started the season off uh, slowly because she had a uh, broken arm from a, another sport yep. um, and she had a big cut at that first one. Yeah, just, just out of the under-15 uh, regional team from last year where we uh, we went away and won a, a runner, won the silver medal and runner-up in the competition. Um, so she's the first year under-17 player. And again, just like the others that have come in here, not, not looking nervous at all in the batting box and really wants to hit that ball. Well, big swing from Millie Fitch and probably the first of the Sturt batters to swing at one out of the zone. Uh, Mark, we saw her uh, Dressick's first change of pace, really, uh, just the pitch before. Yeah, well, James, if you, if you uh, I've been keeping an eye on it. She went from 107, that fouled off, to 81 with the change up. So that's a great drop. 26 k's a drop. That is that is a, a fantastic pitch. And like you said, give her a break. I think she got off the plane a couple of days ago. She just needs to settle in. One of the hottest days we've had this year. Uh, it's a, you know, it's a bit hot. It's a bit sweaty. A little settle in. I think she'll uh, come good. And we look forward to watching her throughout the season, of good course. Good pitch. Very good location, but uh, Millie Fitch watching that one pass by for a ball. So two and two the count. There is two out. There is two runners on, and Sturt have a two-run lead. Gets a good piece of the ball, but Desi Jumaraz over at second base. Gets yeah. it across the first, Karen Dale makes the third out for the Cats. Good fielding there by Desi to get, Desi to get that out and um, say, keep, keep uh, Sturt just to two runs that inning. Well, that was a pretty tidy innings in the, in the end for Walkerville. They only got two runs scored off them. Uh, Jesse's got to see the diamond for the first time now under lights, saw some good quality batting in the Sturt lineup. They got away with, with only two runs scored against them, so I don't think they'll take too much out of that. They'll come out firing now with the bat and um, I think it's King up. Uh, she's on deck. So that'll be interesting to see how they go after this young Sturt pitcher. Yeah, we'll see how uh, Zali goes in the second inning here. She had the first three batters of uh, the Walkerville lineup. They're all K2s. Um, and we'll see what happens here with Sophie King. Another, another uh, player with uh, very, very good speed on the, the diamond. So um, the Sturt defense will have to be moving in very quickly. And, and reacting very quickly if it's a ground ball. Well, we've got plenty of action coming up on Spacequake Sports, bringing you the live action, 2 o'clock every Saturday and 8 p.m. on Wednesday nights. And uh, next week, or this weekend, I should say, West Torrens we will face the Sturt Falcons. Uh, and next Wednesday night, West Torrens will play Glenelg. So, uh, looking forward to seeing that or those clashes right here on Spaceway Sports. I'm sure you'll be watching with uh, with great interest for the West Torrens Glenelg game. Oh, I think uh, I've got a little bit of an interest in it. Of course, I'll be sitting on the sidelines and, and through the fence because I wouldn't want to show any favoritism one way or the other. But as I always say, with any game and certainly any game where my children are playing, I just want a good game. Jordan, of course, over in Japan, representing the country with Maddie Cameron at the Japan Cup starting this weekend. And we look forward to uh, seeing the results. Uh, they've had some practice games so far and uh, mixed results so far, but from what I understand, great feeling amongst the group, new coach, Lang Harrow, and uh, looking forward to see how they go. Yeah, everybody seems really positive about the changes that have come in. Uh, that Lang has brought in and uh, uh, lots of uh, coaching and teaching going on as well. So the players are, um, are really enjoying um, the opportunities they're having there. All right, back to the action. Sophie King is up to bat for the Cats, of course, player of the grand final last season and has a three in one count and gets a lead off walk. So coach Tomlinson would definitely have had something to say to the Cats hitters and uh, I'm sure one of the messages were make her pitch to you guys because uh, you can achieve such things as a lead off walk, very important. Well certainly is James, that's just as good as a lead off single. You're on first base, you got a great batter in Chelsea Robinson up to bat now looking to swing. Bell White's talking to her field saying this is what we've got to do and she's shaping up to bunt. Oh. Tries to put the play in. The runner goes very quickly there too, James. Yeah, King had her head down and uh, looking for the advanced base there. So first bunt attempt of the game and 
just goes foul. So Chelsea Robinson, the new hitter for the Cats, batting down the order a little bit at five. Kathy? Yeah, so they, they have moved things around here and, and Chelsea has moved down the line of a bit. I, it's, I, I doubt it's any, any indication on her form because she's, she has been playing well this season and, and Chelsea's always good for a good hit. But it just could be that uh, this time of the season, Coach Thompson's probably just trying a few new things. Yeah, always good to have you, you better hit as having runners on base so you can uh, take full advantage of that. And of course, uh, Sue Tomlinson, a Hall of Famer herself, would uh, definitely have method to any um, process that she's got in place. Well, we've just seen a couple of good pickups from Sarah Tonkin there. Uh, both of the last two pitches have been in the dirt, two balls and one strike per count. And Sophie King has been anchored to that base. Takes off again on that bunt, so another bunt and run attempt from Chelsea Robertson. Just goes foul, just hitting the top of the ball here, Mark. Yeah, although she's getting around very early, which is, I don't like that personally. I, I, I think you still need to create some sort of surprise or element of surprise. Now that was a bunt and run. They've missed it two times, she's going to settle in now. Wouldn't be surprised if she hits the hit and run and uh, we see a nice play here. Two and two count and King takes off and this is a pop-up fly ball and great pick up from Jordan Lee. It's gone out in the favour of the Cats there. That ball just dropped short in between the pitcher and the second base. She's attacked the ball pretty hard. Sophie King caught in two minds. She saw the pop up and I'm sure she was thinking uh, terrible things in her mind <laughs> that she's taken off on that pitch but it's all turned out all, all okay for the Cats. Two runners aboard. Chelsea Robinson on first and King on second. And that brings Steph with Colette up, and she's Great. done exactly what uh, Sue Tomlinson would have would have asked, and that is uh, put the ball down and advance those runners. So good sacrifice bunt there from Steph. Great sacrifice bunt. Runner called out there, but advances the runners. Now, just going back, I don't want to take Lee's predictions, but I did say hit and run on that one, James, and um, we almost I almost got a double play out of it, so I apologise if I jinxed anybody. Great bunt from Steph Collett then. Absolute um, textbook. Uh, it was far enough away from any of the fielders to uh, force the play over at first, meaning that the runners arrive safely to the advance base, third and second respectively. Ashley Merkin, the new hitter for the Cats, fouling that first pitch off. Looking to take full toll of the runners in scoring position. And leaves that one, which is high and out of the zone for a ball, evening up the count at one and one. Yeah, she's had some good hits again as well this season, so it'll be interesting uh, what's, what happens here with her. I wonder if Sue might even put on a uh, bunt for her with only one out. Low for a ball, so Merkin way back into the count here, two balls and one strike, and back into a hitter's count. Again, low and in for Merkin, so three and one now the count. Uh, Walkerville looking to get back on the winner's list as well. They, they dropped the game 3 nil to the Sutherland Finch-led Port Adelaide. Also, Vicky McFarlane returning for the Magpies. Pulled off what I'm told was one of the plays of the season, a diving backhand play at shortstop to catch the line drive and then firing the ball across back to first base for the double play. So that ball gets into play. Runners may have scored or advanced at least and, and that ball game is totally different. So uh, great performance from the Cats. And a great performance right here is Ali Adams. A change up that floats straight through the middle on a full count. Great calling Sarah Tonkin. Great pitching, Zali Adams. Well, that's four strikeouts with four change-ups as the, uh, the, the the final pitch. So, Kathy, it's working. We called it in the first innings. Absolutely, and it's it's good that she's uh, gone back to that because, as you said, it's it's what worked for her initially, and um, you know, a good time to pull that out, especially with two people in scoring position. Well, we see Ashley Merck in the strikeout victim move over to second base. She's just the courtesy runner for catcher Chelsea Robinson. 
with the speed up rules being a timed game we see with two outs and the catcher on board will come off for generally the last out just not a batter in the next four and Merkin will go to second so two runners in scoring position with two out and the eight hitter is designated player for tonight Aaron Reed. Wings and this one bounces past the pitcher Run. and then past the shortstop for a single to read. The eight hitter doing the job for the Cats, scoring the runner from third, an RBI single to read. And Walkerville very, will be very happy with getting that run on the board and, um, and, and, and just starting to feel, even though it's very early in the game, just starting to feel that they're getting themselves back into it. First pitch swing from Robinson. Bell White gets under it, calls out pivot player at second, Jordan Lee, for the third out. And there were some danger signs there for the Falcons because the Walkerville lineup were rolling. You got the best nine hitter in the comp, Michaela Robinson, up to bat, and just a little disappointed in herself that she caught the end of the bat there and uh, maybe a little out in front as well, a little early on that swing for the third out. Could have been a little bit more patient, taking a couple more um, uh, pitches, I think, James. Uh, they were on a bit of a roll there. Um, the, 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 the coach will have a chat to them about that. Just take a couple of extra pitches. Just get comfortable in there. Settle in. It's, the, um, you know, it's only the second innings. Uh, move into the game. Take and see as many as you can. Plenty more softball left yeah. in this game. She'll get another opportunity. Um, Interesting statewide super special comments from you there, Mark. You want patience at the start of the count, but you want to be aggressive with the three and zero count. So uh, yeah. different different minds in this game. That's what makes it unique, and it's why we love it because no player is uh, the same, mm. and uh, and we love to see the different personalities in this game. So we've got Lauren Fleming uh, up to bat here for Sturt, who's playing left field tonight, and she'll be followed by centre fielder Lily Rashid. Well, we've got Dressick back on the mound here for the Cats, and she gets her signal and delivers. And gee, that aggressive count for uh, the aggressive turns at bat for the Falcons continue, trying to get after that hard down ball. Uh, that's coming and uh, we see Fleming take a signal from Coach Young. Would, would you expect him to see a short play here uh, or um, maybe stay aggressive? Uh, I, th well, I think um, I think he'll still keep aggressive. They've uh, the, whatever he's been calling up, up to this stage has been working for him. So um, well, we're still trying to work out Coach Young. It's his rookie season here in the A grade competition. So. Uh, looking forward to seeing him in action as well as his girls, the Sturt Falcons. Uh, foul from Fleming, one ball and two strikes. Uh, I've played a little bit of ball with uh, Morgan Young, went away to New Zealand together with the Nairn Angels. So you were part of that team, James. And again, he's one that likes to be patient and just wait for your pitch. He's not afraid to bat off two strikes. He'd be instilling that into his girls. Check sweep. Well held. And well held. Chelsea Robinson asks played umpire Lawrence to check down the line and Michael Bendel did not see a swing so two and two the count so good patient hitting now uh, waiting for her pitch or only once one in the strike zone before she goes and Lawrence been a consistent uh, really high, high quality consistent player for many many years um, she's just uh, a real handy um, asset to any team Sorry, Kathy, 107 kilometres an hour trying to clip that corner there. So uh, she's, well, she's warming up, settling yeah, in. Dressick dialing it up now in the second inning and a f full count here. And she will do the fielding off her own pitching and gets it across to Dale for the first out. So uh, good play from the very tall player. We can see on screen there that she's heads and shoulders above everyone. 6'2", uh, guys, maybe. Six foot three, maybe. That's Just tall. <laughs> getting the nod from the statistician, six three. Well, she's going to get great leverage uh, through, through, through her momentum on that ball, isn't she? She's going to be able to rocket it down in 107, consistently, 106, 105, 107. That's good. And then the absolute change up just there. So really, really smart pitching there. 
Good calling from Robinson. No doubt this working relationship will evolve over the season as well. She'll learn the weapons of Dresic and probably not wanting to show too much either on her first outing. She gets a strikeout, so she's had a few strikeout victims uh, tonight already in the, and we're in the bottom of the second inning. So it would be interesting to see the way that she uh, evolves throughout the season, this pitcher-catcher relationship. So maybe we'll be able to see a couple more of her tricks, uh, whether she's got a curve or a rise. But uh, so far, we've just seen the, the hard down and, and, of course, that change-up. Did that come oh. off? What happened then? The well, that just came off the end of the bat, James, and it was going. looks like it was going to shortstop, and that six-foot-two pitcher just reached out and said, I'll have that. Thank you very much. Watch the statewide super replay here. And she reaches out across to the shortstop and says, yep. So maybe off the end of the bat there, I thought I heard a funny sound which made me think maybe flick the catcher's glove, but uh, no danger there. It was off the end of the bat and a good catch from Dresic, who made all three plays that inning. The, uh, the ground ball, the strikeout, and of course that catch to end the inning. So after two innings, it's two runs to one in favour of the Falcons. So they came out red hot. Uh, but you cannot ever count out the Cats. They came back straight away with a run, and now in the top of the third inning, we've got a 2-1 ball game, and we're at the top of the order again. Yeah, well, you've got Dale up on, the, uh, 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 up on deck swinging the bat and looking very uh, serious in the box there, Cathy, looking to hit the ball. She wouldn't have been happy with that little play in the first innings there where she muffled it a little bit. We'll make amends now with the bat. You watch. Absolutely. I, I can't imagine Karen would ever be happy with a, with a K2 or anything but um, the big hit that we know her for. So um, she'll be definitely looking to, to wrong that, right that wrong from the first inning. Well, we're all in agreement with that. The 800 gamer for the Cats will lead off the third inning and Adams gets her signal and delivers high for a ball. So sometimes if you, if you, come, if you start off with a bit of a slow start, you do get a little bit keen, but... This is the experience of the 800 gamer, just watching that first one patiently for a ball. Gets after that one and Zali Adams comes across to field it. Great stretch from Pippa Atkins to make the out. It was a great stretch, led towards it. The throw was a little bit high, but she grabbed it here. If you watch the statewide super replay here, setting up, gets on it comfortably with the swing, but didn't get the chop that she wanted. Big throw and a nice stretch from Pippa. Well done. Yeah, that was a good play all round. So, uh, and now we've got Haley Van Eypen up and again wanting to uh, improve on that strikeout that she had in the first inning. Well, it's been a good, impressive start for the Falcons in the defense. We can see the Sophie King walk is the only run that they scored and it was a lead off in the, in the second inning. So, uh, we saw that with the uh, Seacom Tigers. We saw that they had uh, a few leadoff walks that turned into runs. So uh, if you can get that leadoff on, it just increases the chance of the scoring. And uh, the Falcons have done very well this inning to get the leadoff out. But Nathan fouling that one off. And uh, we'll go around the grounds here, Mark. Get an update from Diamond 2. Uh, after three digs, we're looking at Port uh, are up 6-1. So they've, uh, they've come back from their one nil down and scored six themselves. So uh, looks like they're on a bit of a roll now. Fouling this one off is Hayley Benython. So she goes to one ball, two strike count. Let's just quickly go back over to that game on, on Diamond 2. We're just over about we're around 40 minutes of this game, which means that that game has been going for... An hour and 10, so about 20 minutes to go in that one, so uh, he'll still have an opportunity to come back. However, with Sutherland Finch with a, a five-run lead, you'd almost say that it, it might be out of reach, but uh, Hills Heat do show a, li a little bit of fight in their game, uh, and although they're undermanned as well tonight, Georgia Hood, of course, uh, resides in Mount Gambier, so uh, Mackenzie Wien will probably be doing the pitching tonight. Yeah, Mackenzie Wien, and she's, she's a, a handy little pitcher to have when George is not there. So, um, um, yeah, it was certainly uh, uh, tricky to come back on a 5-1 lead from Port Adelaide, but I certainly wouldn't uh, ever rule Hills out um, with the, any of their team and whoever's on the, the pitching mound. Haber Nathan with another foul ball, two balls and two strikes at the halfway mark of this game. 
high pitch, but it's uh, close enough to have a go at it. Third base player Jesse Keach makes a good play, firing across to Pippa Atkins for the second out. Statewide super replay will show the action. Well, you watch here, James, it was another change up, but they picked it. So it just come in slow, there it is, it just ground out to third base. Good throw, and another great stretch from Pippa Atkins. A grade rookie of the year last year, Pippa Atkins, with the Hills Heat. Desi G. Morales fouls the first pitch off. And a member of the Australian under 19 squad. Pip Adkins. Yeah, so she's been in that squad for a couple of years now. So she's been to two friendship series and and will uh, play for the South Australian under-19s in January next year. And we wish her and the South Australian under-19s that recently announced uh, late last week all the very best for their tournament. Jim Morellis, no balls, one strike. Watching that one through for a called strike at the bottom of the zone. So great pitch from Adams. Two strikes the count, and with two outs as well. They're hard, to, they're hard to keep them low and stay low, and that was a great pitch. This one high and out of the zone, so a waste pitch, so uh, always a good idea not to throw three in a row down the middle. Um, and Adams just making G. Morales uh, guess a little bit now with a two and one and two count. High again for ball two. Well, she threw that change again, 76 kilometers an hour. So she really pulled on that one, but it went a little bit too high. But she's trying the same tactic. Again, you don't want to be too predictable with that same tactic as you get two strikes on you. And the experience of Sarah Tonkin behind the plate is, would be really helping uh, Zali, young, young Zali along and um, making sure she's choosing the right pitches here. Well, Adam's, of course, from Port Pirie. So hello to all our uh, viewers from Port Pirie. I'm sure they'll be watching and supporting uh, one of their own in Adam's. Um, she is, she has come to the Falcons and, you know, probably no better team because you've got the Australian spirit representative in uh, Bell White, who's, uh, you know, not only one of the country's best catchers, but one of the best in the world. But Sarah Tonkin's no slouch either. She was a reserve for the Aussie under-19s, a national champion in 2015 in under-19s, uh, and a junior Aussie squad member herself. Yeah, and uh, these, these young girls are just going to uh, learn so much from the likes of Sarah and Maddie Cameron and Belle White um, and Morgan Young, of course. So um, it, it's really a, a, quite an exciting um, uh, opportunity for them and, and exciting for softball in South Australia. Yeah, a few, a few of the younger brigade in the Falcons lineup. Great pitch and another change up from Adam. So a statewide super special comments from Mark Cramp. He said it that the, the Adams weapon tonight has been that change up. Now I just said it before. She tried with it. They got onto it with a hit down to third base. Don't be too predictable. That's all I want. Um, I know I like consistency, James, but um, let's just save that weapon for a little bit. Give your team some work, but you're doing very, very well right now. Well, we can see the camera uh, focused on the Sturt dugout. And if you can see right behind in the background, we can see young Fidge warming up to pitch. So obviously Morgan has uh, moves up his sleeve. He's got a couple of pitches in the bench. And of course, Millie is the designated player. So he may bring her in to pitch uh, later on in the game. And she made her debut last year. James last season did a really good job the first uh, her first day grade game it was on a Wednesday night I believe um, and uh, yeah so she's just one one year further into that and um, I'm sure she'll be coming in with plenty of confidence well Adams and Fidge both debuted in the A grade competition last year for the Falcons and with a couple of games under their belt Morgan Young sees it uh, you know, fit for, to, to get these girls some more game time. And, and they're doing a great job for the Falcons. Like I said before, a, a winning record of three and two so far this season. And nobody would know those girls better than Morgan. He's been involved in the, in the Dragons program earlier on. He's been involved with the under-15s over the last couple of years. He's, he's been, worked closely at, with Sturt Junior team. So, um, state yeah, battery coach state, as well. State battery coach. So he, he absolutely knows um, what these girls are capable of, and, and he has lots of faith and confidence in them, which is great to see. That one high for a ball on the leadoff hitter in the bottom of the third innings for the Falcons, Pippa Atkins. Well, Pippa just charged out to the batting box then, James. She, she looked focused and she charged out. You saw with that first run and cut attempt. 
Intent, mm. intent on Pippa Atkins, and although she went at that first one and just fouling it off, uh, she's been uh, watchful for the next two. So two balls and one strike. Hit his count now for Atkins. This one just out of reach of Robinson. That would have been a great catch because uh, the catcher would have been on her heels with that pitch coming through in the swing and and she was uh, up pretty quickly and maybe, just maybe, if it was any closer, she may have, may have had a play at that one. That catch could have been in the top catches for the year if she would have if she gotten that. And, and Chelsea's very athletic and, you know, potentially um, that could have uh, easily uh, been a catch for her. What a shot. Pippa Rackens slaps that ball directly into the ground. It bounces over the third base player's head. Merkin could not get a glove to that. Great shot, Pippa Rackens. Well, that's exactly right. She, she started with that, that running swing uh, straight away. But by the time the ball had actually reached third base, she was three quarters of the way down the line, Kathy. She's very quick, isn't she? she? Well, she is, she is very quick. And I can even, uh, she, she may not know that I, that I know this, but um, she actually competed in the state all schools um, athletics championships just a few weeks ago and won the 100 meter race. So we, that's we've... Gonna drop in. That's going to drop in. Sorry, Kathy. that's going to drop in a little bit of a fumble there, but the runner's safe at second and first. So continue, sorry yeah, about that. Yeah, so we all know that she's she's quick in softball circles, but she's also quick um, just in the athletic circles as well. So yeah, very handy player, and uh, to be a left-handed slapper um, with the speed that she's got is just a, a great... Uh, I'm preaching to the converted here, Kathy. <laughs> I know, but the players with an athletic background just seem to have that little bit of an extra advantage over, you know, someone who, who may have just come into the sport or only ever played softball. Um, you can tell those athletic players from a mile away, can't you? Well, you can, and if you read every talent search, talent ID, documents that are coming out, um, the research on them is that if you want your child to, to excel at a sport, you need to have them playing a lot of sports as a youngster. So um, anything that's gonna help. Heads up play from the Cats. Karen Dale comes charging in, reads that bunt to perfection, fires it across to the lead runner, and Tonkin is caught short by a couple of metres. Let's watch the statewide super replay here. Well, she comes around, not as early as I thought she was, but the 800 gamer got in there early and just fired that to third base and beat the runner. And again, if you know that, that Morgan Young will be looking for a little bit more out of the runners, they know that play was on, so they've got to get off early. But that was a fantastic play by the 800 game veteran. What a great play from Dale. The Cats really needed that out as this ball's fouled out to right field territory. Great catch! From Sophie King in foul territory, the runner from second will advance. We've got a little bit of action to catch up here, <laughs> Kathy. Uh, we saw Pippa Atkins lead off with a single to left field, slapping that ball over third base's head. A great chop into the ground. Bell White was then the next hitter, hitting early in the count. It's just dropped short of the right fielder, so two runners on. That bunt from Sarah Tonkin and it played into the hands of Dale and playing that lead runner. All of a sudden we've got uh, one out and then that last batter uh, has hit the ball out to right field and a catch in foul territory from the bat of Jesse Keats. You got a single in the first inning and what a great catch and a great play from Sophie King out at right field. Not only was it in foul territory, she had to turn the body around almost a full 180 degrees to get that ball in. Stop the runner from first from advancing and unfortunately for her, couldn't stop the runner advancing from second to third. Yeah, what a great play by Sophie. She's, you know, we're usually used to seeing her in the infield in the pivot position and wow, she's just doing amazing things out in the outfield as well. What just an all round uh, class act from her. Well, Sarah Tonkin laid down that bunt and was able to get aboard and a pickoff attempt from the knees. And the run scores. So the one three split. So we've seen a couple of one three splits tonight, all with different outcomes. That one was a straight steal. Uh, Jordan Lee's the runner. So I was just saying that Sarah Tonkin got aboard with a fielder's choice. And as she's the catcher, the catcher speed up, saw Jesse Keach come over to first. More wheels for the Sturt Falcons and she slides in safely. Jordan Lee hits that one over to second base as he gets a handle on it eventually and just makes the play in time. So that 1-3 split, the stolen base for Keach and that throw came from the knees of Chelsea Robinson and Bell White read that one perfectly out of the hand and was able to just uh, stroll across for the third run. 
Yeah, she came in very easy to, um, I wasn't too sure if that play was going to be cut off again by Jim Morellis and then have her at, 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 uh, at home. It was a bit of a weird play for me, James. I, I don't know if I would have particularly let it go in this time in the game that, that makes it, what's that, 3-1 now. Um, it's a tight game. Uh, you, every, every run, clearly every run counts, but when you're getting the ladder in the game, the time's clicking on, we've got 35 minutes to go, that one run could be the run, but... Um, well, you know, it's experience again, but Chelsea Robinson, experienced player, thought she could have got her. Cathy, I mentioned before the 3-1-3 the three, three split plays. There's been three different plays, so to coach Young just really mixing it up, not becoming a predictable coach by making that same play over and over. Walkerville had been up to the task the first two times. The, you know, the runners may have got safe, uh, but... The third runner of third base never scored. However, on this occasion, something different again, a straight up steal this time uh, and uh, and managing to score. So third time lucky for, for Young. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that that tells a little bit about Morgan and what, what he's like as a, as a coach. And, I, and I'm sure that's what he's going to be bringing to the Stars players. Um, the Open women's team at the Nationals is just changing things up a little bit and not being so predictable. Um, and I th and it's, a, it's certainly a breath of fresh air. I, I think it's something that a lot of the players are getting used to, but um, you know, in, in a game of um, percentages, you know, we, what we need to be looking for to, to be winning these national championships is that 1%. Well, speaking of the stars, uh, stay tuned or keep your eyes out on the Softball SA website and Facebook page for that big announcement of the stars team will be coming later this week. Uh, so keep your eye out and uh, some big names in that team to uh, give South Australia a tilt at the Gilly Shield. So, patient hitter up to bat allowed us an opportunity to, uh, to speak a little bit, and it's Sophie King had a walk the first time up to bat. Two ball, two strike count, and a good, very good turn at bat so far from King. She has looked on tonight. And, and scoring the, the only run that Walker will have had so far um, from that walk at the leadoff in the first uh, second inning. So she's taking her time here with, with uh, Zali, waiting for her pitch. Well, we mentioned uh, earlier results. Uh, Walkerville uh, went down 3-0 to Port Adelaide. Sturt had a bye last week. So. King, great shot. That ball was high and probably out of the strike zone. Uh, but she was able to get to it up to the task and smashes that ball to centre field for a lead-off single. Yeah, definitely high, James. But she read the ball completely and it came off the sweet spot and hit right in the middle of the diamond. That's a, a perfect placement for a hit that wasn't hard again, Cathy. Just placement hitting. Just How just placement, Sorry, Kathy, exactly. Well, how good has King been so far tonight? Chelsea Robinson, the hitter for the Cats, watching that one through for a called strike. How good has Sophie been tonight? Lead off walk and a run in the second inning for the Cats. That outfield catch, she's played very well at right field so far, and then that single. So King, one of the players to watch so far this game. And Sophie, again, you know, over the years, such a consistently good player. You can always rely on Sophie for a good game. I don't think I've ever seen her do anything but, um, uh, you know, high-quality softball every time she's out on the field. One of my favourites, for sure. She's not out of the action yet. She could steal. Uh, as we saw, a very entertaining turn at bat last time. Chelsea Robinson was up and uh, a couple of bunt and runs attempts. And uh, Nostradamus to my left here called that hit and run. Um, that uh, Chelsea was able to get safely aboard and advancing King. Last turn at bat. Two and one count. Three and one count. No, it's a ball four. Ball four, actually. So. Three. Oh, ball three. Oh, we had it right the first time. So uh, <laughs> three and one now. The count for Robinson. Uh, and sharing a laugh around the diamond is King and Robinson. All business from Coach Tomlinson. James, I haven't seen Chelsea Robinson bat too much, but is this a general tactic that she gets around positions like this and then comes back and swings? Swing and a miss. The steal attempt. Great throw from Sarah Tonkin. Looked like Joe White had a tag opportunity, the statewide super replay, but how good is she? I keep saying that Sophie King avoids the tag. What a great fadeaway slide here. She'll take the outside of the base. Oh, very this goes close. goes in hard. 
full count on Robinson. Oh, Sophie King just in all the action here for the Cats. And Robinson gets Good. under this one. Looks like it's going to just go foul. Well, that would have scored King from second. Uh, Mark, you just mentioned on the statewide super special comments that Robinson will square up and she'll pull back for a almost a half swing or a, or, or a two strike swing as, as some people might call it. Uh, just protecting the zone there, more controlled swing. You can see the hands are just up from the handle a little bit as well. So looking to get more control on her swing and get the ball into play. So she knows she's got a job to do with that runner on one. First job for a batter is to move that runner because the game's not about getting hits, the game is about scoring runs. 100%. You just saw her hit that ball out to left field though. Her, her mechanics is, is really, really good, Cathy. The way that she can see the ball from the position that she's in and make contact. I just, I think she could be a great hitter if she stood there and really had a crack at the ball. There we go, like that. That's uh, going to drop in. That's going to drop in. Looking at third for the play. She's going to beat it out. The umpire says, you are out. Up to bat was Steph Collett, who swings at the first pitch and what looked to be a safe hit. Let's watch the statewide super replay. Great play from left field. Fleming Ooh. and plate umpire had to make the call for the well, out. Time's been called here, James. The umpires are getting together. Just have a bit of a chat about it. Uh, that was a bang-bang play, as you like to say. Um, well, I'm not too sure well, where we lie here. Well, I can tell you why it, it's the, the umpires are getting together, because uh, we may see it on the statewide super replay here. Third base umpire Gray was actually watching to see if it was a catch or not, and so he was in the right position for that. Umpire Lawrence had to move around and rotate and so maybe maybe it was umpire Bendel that was in the best position so they've, they've had a talk uh, played umpire Lawrence over speaking to coach Young about this well it was very close very and they've called her safe. James, they've overruled. They've had a conversation and brought her back to third. I think the, that's the right call, I think, looking at it, in my personal opinion. Well, it's not often you see the umpires change their mind. Uh, loaded bases and no outs now for Ashley Merkin, the hitter for the Cats. Swing and a foul on that first pitch. So, so Walkerville really looking to take advantage of this uh, interesting, I was looking at the replay screen. Did anyone have your eye on Coach Tomlinson there? Was she the one that, that asked the question? Yeah, Coach Tomlinson asked her player to stand there and don't move because that was a bit of a, a decision that she knew may have not have been correct and would like a second opinion. Or well, foul for, for Merkin. And how good are you as a coach to get uh, an umpire to change a decision on a forced play? It was uh, certainly uh, full credit to Coach Tomlinson. Sees her cats with loaded bases now and uh, a good part of the lineup as well for the cats. We see Merkin and Reed up next. We've got that RBI single in the first inning or second inning it was. Strike out from Adams. Uh, Gets the out. That's the first out now for the Falcons. And there's been some, some good, uh, chances for the Falcons as well. That steal attempt, so, so King got there safely and, and that force play at third Fleming's throw looked to be on the money and it was a close play and, and so the Cats with a couple of lives this innings. And they're just putting pressure on that Sturt, uh, that Sturt defense there. So, you know, making them have to, to think really quickly on the spot and, and get some, some good plays and, um, you know, it's paying off for them. We've got bases loaded now. Well, the pivot players, shortstop and second base, way inside the line. They want to stop this run from scoring. Aaron Reed just gets a laser beam out to right field. It's gone foul, fortunately for the Falcons, unfortunately for the Cats, because that would have scored a couple of runs. With the speed that the Cats have on Diamond at the moment, King, Robinson, Collett, that may have scored three. Oh, definitely, James. And they're getting big leads, too. King is ready to run home. She is fired up. And this she'll one popped up she'll... a little bit. Infield fly is in Not... effect, but that one's gone to the outfield. Ada Caruana, as good as they get in the outfield, takes a great catch. Her momentum is coming forward, so she had the right uh, play for her for the outfield and restricts 
the Cats no runs. Great throw yeah. as well to Tonkin covering home. Absolutely fantastic play. That's a quality. We all know that Aid is a quality player and that's what a quality right fielder does. They, they, the minute that ball is hit, they're on the go and they know exactly where the ball needs to be thrown the minute they catch it. Well, the Falcons up to the task with full pressure, loaded bases and no outs. They've retired the last two hitters and uh, Zali Adams goes to work here on Michaela Robinson. With strike one the count. Well, in the previous play, you got someone like King at third, ready to come home, James. Would you have dropped the bunt down there on a squeeze and just made her come home? Before the second yeah, out? Yeah, before the second out. That's what I mean. I mean, I, I, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but we're trying to bat our way out of loaded bags and two out now. But previously, one out, you got someone who with the wheels at third base, you could have dropped that and maybe, maybe got the run. Strike out the third out for Zali Adams. Stand up and be counted. Zali Adams, two big strikeouts with two outs and a great catch from right fielder Ada Caruana. The Falcons are flying here at West Beach. That is impressive from some... What, would Zali be what, 16 years old? Like, what composure to have three people behind her on, on the base and still do the job that she needs to do. So impressive from this Falcons lineup. Uh, but all the talk before the game was on Jesse Dressick, the, the import player for the Cats. It was the Falcons got the early jump. They scored too early. It has been nail biting ever since. It's been full action and the defense for both teams have been on show. The offense has been terrific because they're each of the batters for each of the lineups are waiting for good pitches to get after. This is a cracking game of softball. And this is what we like to see on Wednesday nights. This is fantastic. And, um, you know, we've got the experience of uh, Walkerville and against the youth of uh, uh, youth of uh, Sturt. And, and this is, yeah, this is a, a cracking game, as you said, James. Well, the good thing about this is that Walkerville won't lie down either. They'll take it all the way to the end. Well, keep yourself locked into this broadcast of this game of softball that we're seeing here. Uh, unbelievable, the, the level that we're seeing here tonight is fantastic. Uh, both teams with some experience, both teams with some youth, and uh, youth at the plate right now in Millifidge. Yeah, recently uh, um, selected to the under-17 side, Millifidge. Um, and they'll be heading to, where is their tournament this year, James? Right here, Kathy. Right here in right South Australia. Right here in South Australia, the under-17 combined event. You'll see the best under-17 talent in the country right here at West Beach. We are trying our best to bring you some broadcasting right here on Spacequake Sports. So uh, very much looking forward to uh, bringing you some of the under-17 action January 5th to 11th. So uh, we will see... Millie Fidge, uh, representing South Australia in January. Well, I've seen that lineup of that under-17 team. There's some really strong uh, youngsters on that team. So I think they're looking for some good outcomes from our under-17s. Well, Fidge just hitting that one foul away from Auntie Karen there, the family <laughs> connection uh, on opposing teams tonight. Two and two count and Dressick into her motion. That was a bit of a change of pace and ground ball two straight back to the pitcher is uh, the ground out to Fidge and first out of the inning. So important to get the lead off. Absolutely. And now we're followed up with uh, Lauren Fleming. Well, Fleming had that very good play out at left field just last inning and only just the, the call was actually called out and overturned she fouls that one off to the right side so heads up to the spacequake camera <laughs> spacequake sports camera operator there at right field that one has just missed her so uh and it came off the bat very hard she's looking to get strike. a hit here and that one down the middle for a called strike and behind in the count now fleming it's no balls and two strikes. It was 
hit a ball, but she watched it. And we saw Robinson's glove go up there, calling for a high pitch. And as I mentioned earlier in the game, when you're ahead with a zero balls, two strike count, you don't want to throw another one down the middle. Keep that batter guessing. That's, that's the name of the game. We've got a lot of good batters here. And uh, uh, it, it becomes a mental game rather than just uh, doing the same thing all the time. So, yes, we've got to keep them guessing because if we keep doing the same thing all the time, well, they're going to make you pay. Two and two count, and Sturt Falcons have a two-run lead here in the bottom of the fourth. We've got about 20 minutes left in the game. Foul ball and just gets away from catcher Robinson. And uh, we know there's no new innings after 85 minutes, so we'll keep an eye on that clock there. So we're around about the 70-minute mark right now, 70 minutes into the game. Um, and after this batter we're going to bring you a score update from the backfield the game between the hills heat and the port magpies a ball and full count now for fleming so lauren had a uh, hit uh, the pitcher well she got out in her first attempt at bat so it was a uh, pitcher to, to first base out um, and i'm sure she'll be wanting to get herself on base this time payoff pitch but it's fouled off and fleming stays alive We've got one out in the bottom of the fourth. It is a full count. Uh, the Cats will definitely be on their toes here. Uh, they want this batter, then they want the nine hitter Lily Rashid. This one goes foul as well. So every pitch uh, you could see some action. Uh, we've got a uh, special guest going to bring us an update from the, from the backfield in a moment, softball. SA Life member Lee Hull, he won't know this. This has been one of the games of the season, Lee. Plenty of action, terrific skills on display from both teams. We were just talking about how entertaining this game has been. So uh, we'll just catch you up on that. Fleming gets after this one. It's going to be dropping short in front of Michaela Robinson. Just out of the reach of shortstop Collett just out of the reach of center fielder Robinson and Fleming's aboard after a great turn at bat. Yeah, very patient, waiting for her pitch and, uh, and yeah, and it obviously paid off. So um, uh, Lily Rashid to bring up uh, to bring up the in, end of the order or we've got a, uh, looks like we've got a change. Yeah, Rachel Tonkin's gonna come in off the bench for a pinch hit for the Falcons. Fleming on board at first base. This gives us a perfect opportunity to get a statewide super special comments and an update from the backfield. Welcome to the coverage, Lee. Uh, thank you, uh, folks, and uh, yes, I, it started off well over there, it's b the game between Port Adelaide and the Hills. First time Hills had a look at uh, Katie Sutherland Finch, the uh, hyphenator, and uh, they started well because uh, Amber Hood picked a base on balls and then Danny Perez has hit Katie for a triple, stand-up triple to right field. It, it uh, shades of things to come. That was soon changed though. As Rachel Tonkin sees that one through for a called strike. Bunts this one. Dead ball's a call. And it has come off the batter. The foul ball has gone behind the batter. It's collected the batter as she takes off out of the box and dead ball batter is out. So two outs now for the Falcons. Uh, Ada Caruana, we're back to the top of the order for the Falcons, Lee, back to you and the update from the other game. Yes, it was uh, innings number three where the damage was done. Uh, Port Adelaide batter after batter faced the pitchers and in total the Hills uh, Heat uh, used four pitchers during the night in four innings. We completed four innings. The score finished at 8-1 Port Adelaide and uh, Port Adelaide had five hits, 11 base on balls they received and uh, left on base with nine, and uh, Hills, he'd only had two safe hits for the night. Well, one of them coming, uh, takes off on the pitch, Fleming, and she has to get under this side, just dropping out of the glove of Collett, so safely arriving is Fleming. So runner in scoring position now with two out, Caruana strike was the call. So. So Lee, sorry, what, what was the score of that game, did you say? 8-1 eight, eight, in the... 8-1, was finished. that a mercy in... Uh, uh, no, no, we only played four innings. Four innings over the over the 90 minutes where we see what has taken the time. 11 walks, did you say, four pitches? Uh, so yeah, 11 A number walks. of pitching changes 
uh, might go through that in a moment with you. Caruana hits that one over to third base, Merkin, and we've seen that not only has she got a good glove so far over the course of this season, Merkin, in the early part of this season, but she's got a great arm as well, and the bullet throw, deadly accurate, and we'll see the statewide super replay. Caruana is as quick as they come, and she was thrown out by two steps. Great play from Merkin retiring the Walkerville uh, sorry, the Sturt line up in the bottom of the fourth inning. We've still got 15 minutes to go, so this probably may be the last chance for Coach Tomlinson and her Cats. Lee, four pitches for the Hills Heat tonight. Yes. Who, who started the game? Started with Emily Hopkins, followed by Mackenzie Wien, then Kelly O'Brien, then Courtney May. Then I ran out of room, James. <laughs> Did they throw one inning each, or were there changes oh, no, in between the, innings? No, no, it was mainly... Uh, the game was uh, reasonably tight, and then... Uh, Mackenzie Wynn came on the pitch in the second, in the third innings. That's where the damage started. Walked about four batters, and it uh, uh, and it just compounded from there. So she had to be replaced by uh, the singing Kelly O'Brien. Well, as we uh, just see a slight delay in getting back to the action here, Stuart Falcons have brought in that relief pitcher that we were talking about earlier, young Millie Fitch. So she's going through her warm-ups. Uh, and have, who's come out of the game? Uh, looks like, do we have a new player at it? Third, third base? No, Jesse Keach Jessie still Keech. at third base. So uh, so just the change of pitcher. So the flex is coming in for the, for the DP. Um, the Kelly O'Brien came in to pitch. Uh, we also saw uh, Courtney May and Mackenzie Wien throw as well. So, um, gee, full credit to the Magpies then. So how many hits did they get? So uh, by the looks of things, Matchkey at the top of the order with a couple of hits and a walk. Yeah, she, so, had, a, she had a good night with the bat. Is that uh, her best game for the uh, year? I think for, so. For the it's the best game I think I've seen, uh, James. Now, uh, now, they were missing the red-hot Rita Meyer as well. You gave yeah. me an interesting stat before the game, Lee. Yes, uh, Rita Meyer in the last 10 at bats, appearances, nine safe hits. Yeah, how's that for some batting? That's an unreal batting and a hole that Port Adelaide obviously filled tonight. Uh, let's go back to the action just quickly here. This is a battle uh, for a conversation around the uh, Christmas dinner table for sure. Uh, Millie Fidge uh, up against Auntie Karen at the moment. Uh, I'm sure there's mixed feelings out oh, there. That, that's a tough one. And I, I did see Julie Dale, so grandma and mum, in the stands earlier on. So, um, yeah, this must be a really tough situation here. And, well, who, nobody's going to win here, really, are they? <laughs> Three generations <laughs> of the Fidge Dale family here tonight, and uh, and great pedigree throughout that family. Um, Absolutely, Julie, of course, a Hall of Famer and, and a uh, and a national championship winning coach. Um, this one here is a ground ball to shortstop, but uh, Belinda White having to move to a backhand side. Did she get stuck in the mud out there at shortstop? Karen Dale's aboard safely, and most importantly, Lee Hull, thank you very much for joining us. A great update from the backfield. So uh, as we watch the statewide super replay, gee, Karen really pulled that ball, and uh, a great play uh, and a good opportunity for... The fact is a bunt attempt from Benitha. Now she's quick. Pippa Atkins is a left-hander, so she's in good position here to fire it across to first base. Jordan Lee makes a good play, but very well executed bunt from Benitha, advancing Karen Dale to second base. Now that's exactly what the Cats would have been after, putting a runner in scoring position. They need that run to get back into the game. And that's what it's all about, one run at a time, uh, one, one batter at a time, and advancing those. And uh, we'll see what Desi G. Morales has to do here, but uh, in the meantime, well pitch, Karen, just well pitch. Uh, into the back net, and Karen Dale now on third base. Just getting instruction here from Coach Tomlinson, and she wants G. Morales to hit, not only hit the runner in safely, but also get herself aboard with one out here in the bottom of the top of the fifth inning. Belinda White has plenty of time. Ball was hit very hard. Pippa Atkins, just to be sure, runs this ball into pitcher Millie Fitch for the second out. And uh, they might be running out of chances here. Statewide super special comments, Mark yeah. Graham. Yeah, well, they hit it. They hit it. They very hit it, hit it hard, James. But Bell White had plenty of time. 
We've got two out. We need. We can't bunt now. We've got a runner in scoring position. We wouldn't lay the bunt down. We've got to get a safe hit. This is where the pressure comes back on to the batting team, whereas before the pressure was on the fielding team when they had loaded bases in the same position. So, Strike called for a one and one count now. Sophie King has been one of the players of the game and she will need to stand up right here and right now for the Cats. Two outs. Fidge firing that one in there. It's low for a ball, so two balls and one strike. Pitching very well, James. Um, uh, Fidge is pitching. I, I like it. This is the first time I've seen her pitch and um, I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. Great shot from King. This one goes up the middle and scores a run. So it's good to be King. Sophie King with an RBI single and reducing the lead by a run. Another great play. And who else? Sophie King. Yeah, having a blinder tonight. 94 k's an hour, uh, that, that pitch coming down. And hit it comfortably and hit it well. And she's liking that center field position. She's had two safe hits out at center field, James. Just uh, a sing two safe single hits. And the base on balls to start with. So... Um, yeah, doing great job in the in the batting box for her team tonight. Josie Robinson, now the hitter for the Cats as that ball is fouled off, and Sarah Tonkin didn't know where that one went. Uh, just picking that one up from behind plate umpire Lawrence. Okay, so uh, one strike is the count. It's a foul ball runner on first base is Sophie King. Now they need this runner in scoring position. Swing and a miss. Now this one gets away from catcher Tonkin. So if King stands up safely at second, looked like she was putting her head down, maybe even looking for that extra base, but uh, cooler heads prevail. Runner now in scoring position. Chelsea Robinson up to bat. I was just about to say, scoring position, the runner is there. She's been looking to run all night. You can see, you can see Chelsea Robinson holding back now, like I was saying, and well done. Before she was shaping up early, James. Now she's looking to bat and swing hard. Is that going to change her momentum in the game, her focus in the game, like her different batting styles halfway through a game? Class act at the plate, Robinson. Maybe, Mark, we don't know the mental state of, of some of these players, you know, when, when the pressure is on in the heat of the moment. Uh, but Robinson, as cool as a cucumber, like as, as good as they come, a Stars representative for uh, many years now, an Aussie representative. She played in the MPF uh, in the Pro League earlier this year. Smashes that one there. It's high and it's just gone foul. So she liked the look of that one, although out of the zone. She was obviously looking for it to come in a slight, slightly above the strike zone and able to hit that one out. Sophie King would have scored easily to tie up the ball game well. If the score is tied at the end of this top half of the inning, Sturt will have another opportunity, but time is running out now for the Cats, so it has to be this batter. We, you just said that Chelsea was very, very calm, James. She did the, 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 the perfect thing there, put the ball behind the runner out to right field and gave King the best chance of rounding third and coming home. Very cool uh, in the batting box right now. Look at her, she looks very comfortable. And all she needs to do is get a single out because we know that Sophie King can convert many bases in, so in back a short to the period pitcher, of time. But it gets past her and over to first base for the out. Great coverage from Belinda White. A lateral movement taking her up the middle. Just out of reach for pitcher Fidge. She gets that play and firing across to Pippa Atkins. Let's watch the statewide super replay. And what a great throw. Uh, good, good coverage on the lateral speed there from Bell, but um, that rocket arm, we've seen it a few times tonight already, James. Just so so uh, consistent, but just hard. she just throws that ball hard. Well, she just got her glove to it, which just slowed it down enough for Bell White to get behind it. Um, it, we, say it we seem to say it every week. It's a game of inches, isn't it, James? Yeah, it clips the glove of the pitcher and uh, takes the momentum of the ball. Uh, if that had just been... You know, just a little bit out of the reach. You know, we would have seen a tight ball game right here. But instead, now with about six and a half minutes remaining, Walkerville need three quick outs right here and right now within the next 90 seconds. Is it, is it possible? I can't imagine it's going to be possible. <laughs> it would have to be something we haven't seen before. It's going to require, well, first and foremost, this uh, warm-up to, to get done and uh, into position, get the batter in the box early. 
uh, Coach Young surely would be saying, go deep in the count. With, without a doubt, that'll be the first thing he would have said to everyone. Leave, leave those first few pitches, you know, wait, wait until the end, take some time off the clock. Okay, Dresswick will look to go to work pretty quickly here. Pippa Atkins, the hitter for the Falcons. And she's had a, a good night. She's had two singles out at uh, left field and scored one of the runs in the first inning for Sturt. Great team contribution from the Falcons tonight. It would be hard to pick a statewide super player of the game, uh, but Atkins would have to be up there. She's got a couple of hits so far tonight. She's, and she's played really well in first. You know, there's been a couple of balls that have just been uh, a, a little bit left of centre and, and coming in towards her, and she's been able to stretch out and reach out and um, make sure that nothing goes past her. Mark, who's been a standout for you so far this game? Oh, that's a nice hit by Pippa. Oh, great attempt at a catch there. Diving attempt, James. That was fantastic. Just out of reach of Hayley Benith, and she got airborne for that one. It's clipped the glove. She was just millimetres or inches away, <laughs> Mark. Is. But let's watch the statewide super replay here. Pippa Atkins gets a great piece of the ball. It's gone off like a laser beam. She has not stopped running. She has accelerated out at first base and stood up comfortably at second. Great base running from Pippa Atkins. Great piece of the ball. Let's not penalise Benith in there. Let's give Pippa her third hit of the game. Absolutely. I have de definitely written it down as a hit. I mean, uh, when, when any time you see a player having to die for a ball, and even if it clips their glove, that has still got to be a safe hit. Well, Belle White, an RBI single, her last turn up to bat. And uh, foul ball. Yep, foul ball. Well, just going back to the statewide super player of the game, James. I might flip the coin and even talk about King. For a side that's down by one run at the moment, she's really put in across the board, batting, base running, fielding. So I'm liking her attitude towards the game as well tonight. Yeah, I, I can't speak highly enough for, for Sophie King. Great game, good performance. Uh, and definitely kept the Cats in this game tonight after they got off to a flying start, two runs in the first inning coming off. As Bell White hits this one to Steph Collett, it's shortstop for the first out of the game. So three and a bit minutes left in this game. This will be the last inning uh, for sure. So we're into a bit of playtime now for the Falcons. Now that the inning has started, we have to complete it, of course. Uh, Pippa Atkins uh, for mine. I, I like to give the the chocolates, as they say, to the winning lineup, and uh, and Pippa Atkins has made some great plays and a couple of good stretches at first base. So Sarah Tonkin bunts this one across for the second out, advancing Pippa Atkins to third base. But surely Morgan knows this is the last inning. You know, give give the players an opportunity maybe to <laughs> score the run, but it's it's all business for Young. It always is. It yeah, is. yeah. He'll be he'll be taking this as a learning opportunity for the girls. Like you just said a couple of minutes ago, it's play time now for the girls, isn't it? Because we've got to play the innings out. So he'll be putting every scenario on the table he can because that's what Morgan does. He thinks about it and thinks about it and thinks about it. Well, for uh, a rookie coach, uh, we've seen a, a great performance from, from Morgan and, and uh, maybe a, a fiery character may have blown up about a couple of decisions that have gone against them tonight, but uh, he's kept a cool head. Uh, and um, it's been impressive, been an impressive performance from a, uh, a very good coach. What, what I admire about that, that you've got a rookie coach with a veteran coach, the decision that was overturned by the, the umpires before, and both of them took it. There's the third, the out, third out of the game, James, and uh, I would dare say the umpires may be calling this very shortly. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe we've got... Maybe we've still got time. Still... All right, countdown clock... Uh, it's something different that we've seen tonight. Obviously, uh, normally we count upwards because we know when uh, when time is up then, and we and we've got that time frame of the of the last five minutes to go. Maybe it's actually one minute thirty until the five minutes. the five minute warning. So maybe that countdown clock is just five running five minutes uh, faster. So um, this is very exciting. This adds another element to the game. <laughs> I'm I'm absolutely pumped by this because Walkerville has 
have been and and justifying Morgan Young's bunt attempt as well. Yeah. Walkerville are still in this game, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. This is we're going the distance. Well, we thought this was a, a, a strategy, a, a, a move from um, Coach Young that we hadn't seen. We thought we were developing his young players, but. Um, we, we, we might have keep our eyes out here, James, because uh, Walkerville know that they've got a chance to get this back. And I told you at the start of the game, never count them out. Collett going to lead it off and Merck and then Reed, then Robinson, then the top of the order. Mm. Steph had a single out to left field uh, last, uh, last inning. Um, and I've seen her do quite a few uh, good hits throughout the season so far. So uh, I'd be expecting that she's going to start this team off with something that'll get her on base. She's looked great tonight so far. Collar and fouls this one off. And and she had that great hit out to left field and, and it was out of reach of Fleming, but she had that force play at third that was overturned. You just mentioned that one statewide super special comments from Mark Cramp on that force play that was overturned. Um, that could turn out to be a key, uh, a key moment of the game. But yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, it's, it's it's the nature of the game at this level, and this is what we want to see from our teams, is that it, you, every every play is important. Every play counts. Um, you can't just give something away just to be, just because of a, um, you know, it, 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 that it doesn't matter. So every play will make a difference in this game. Well, I tell you what, James, I'm excited as you are. I, I normally take notes on balls and strikes and where they are. I've thrown the pen away. <laughs> I don't know what's happening now. I'm just watching the game in anticipation. Anything could happen. Stay tuned. Collett going uh, deep into the count, two and two count. She's seen a bit of a mixed bag here so far from Finch. She's fouled one off, so she's in the zone here. Kathy, she's uh, looking to get the, her team off to a great start to the inning. And um, some call three. We've got Aaron Reed coming up. Aaron had a, a safe hit in the outfield and her first had it. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron's been a great performer uh, as in the DP role, um, and she'll be on deck after Ashley Merkin. Oh. And there's, a, there's a walk to Steph, um, and we've got a uh, substitution here, so Kathy Rowe coming in for Ashley Merkin. Well, Merkin's had a couple of strikeouts so far this game, so Coach Tomlinson going to her bench and, and bringing on uh, Rowe for a pinch hit now. Uh, key turn it back because um, I mentioned earlier in the game when you can get your lead off on you can um, when you get your lead off on it increases your chance of scoring yeah hundred percent James exactly we've seen it we've seen it with West Torrens a lot they always seem manage to get their lead off runner on and they always seem to advance it around you've got the tying run at first base and like I said before, whether you get on there with a ball four or you get on there with a single, you're on there to score. So the clock is counting up now to five minutes. We're moving forward. We're looking to advance the front. I would be putting something short here to get her around a second, and that's what she's shaping up to do. Oh, and they popped it up to third. Well, you couldn't have asked for a better play for the Falcons. Uh, unfortunate for the Cats. Uh, Kathy Rowe has popped it up uh, to Jesse Keach. A good play from Keach, anticipating the bunch who was in there like a flash statewide super replay here. As watch the corners pounce on this. Pipper Atkins was there as well. Jesse Keach making the catch. So Erin uh, Reed now the the batter up for the Cats, and she fouls that first one off for a strike. So. Yeah, and Aaron's had, both of her hits have gone out in the outfield. One was caught out at, uh, out at right field. But um, again, if she can get something past the infield, there's a good chance that'll, bring, that'll take Steph up to second base. Swing and a miss for Reed. So first pitch for Rowe was a pop-up catch. First pitch for Reed was a swing and a, and a foul. So definitely trying to advance that runner. Collar on first. So he gets a big jump and Reed fouls that one off. So great battle. Great battle. We've got the runner on first base. Uh, she's definitely looking to to move the move to second and into scoring position. Erin Reed with the job ahead of her. Well, they need to take advantage of any strike that they can get now and start advancing it and get the get the play happening. Um, the, the, the momentum sort of slowed down a little bit from last innings. We need to. 
Well, there we go. She's taking off to second on a wild pitch now and getting very comfortably. Bell White just saying, hold it up there, no play. So now the runner is in scoring position, James, off a nice contactable hit here. Leadership of Bell White just sitting on Fidge's shoulder there like a conscience. Uh, <laughs> just giving her some uh, positive uh, message there to make sure that you work on the batter here. One out and two strikes the count. Oh, it'll be two balls and two strikes now. Reed has full count, full count now. Three balls and two strikes on Reed. Oh, there's that one off. Now, Collett getting a real big jump there at second. And the, the reason for that is if this ball goes anywhere to the outfield, she needs to score. If we tie the game in this inning, we'll watch uh, Sturt get a final opportunity, although with the clock counting upwards now, uh, we are reaching the 90 minute mark. We'll finish the inning. Oh, oh there we go, the double play. Is... Double play is made to end the game. Pippa Atkins in the action again. We mentioned Pippa Atkins before. She ends the game with a double play. The line drive takes a great reflex catch. Had to wait for the shortstop, Belinda White. Let's watch the statewide super replay here. Steph Collett caught in no man's land. You cannot do anything about that. Dives back and a great play, a good pickup from the Sturt Falcons and Atkins over to White for the out. That was that was just a, a quality play and, and what great thinking and, and on the spot. I mean, it, that was just a matter of inches and uh, Pippa was quick enough to be able to capitalise on that. Well, just to reiterate, for those playing along at home, you didn't have to make the tag. You just had to get back on because the catch was the catch was made. So you just had to beat Bell back. Unfortunately, the stretch, she had to buy the stretch and caught the ball back and didn't tag up. Cannot blame Collett for that one bit. That line drive went like a laser beam and just class play. What a fitting way to end a great game. This, that was an amazing game to watch. A pleasure to call. Sturt Falcons running out victors. Three runs to two. Uh, you know what, guys? I might run over and grab Cooper Atkins. She, for me, she was statewide super player of the game. Yeah, totally agree with you, James. She was, she was in the batting, she was in the fielding, um, and just a dynamic runner through the bases as well. I mean, she just, just had an all-round game tonight. Well, James said it, uh, Kathy, fitting end to a game that we thought was counting down probably in innings before, and then it sort of came into a very exciting climax at the end there, and um, a double play to finish it off. And I think I said to Mike Vandell before he walked out, give me some action tonight, and he had the last play of the game. So it was great to see. Uh, very exciting. Yeah, and I hope that those of you at home who've been watching really enjoyed the game uh, as well on the TV, because it certainly was, or on your computer, it was very exciting to watch here. And we're just getting ourselves ready to have a have a bit of a chat with uh, Pippa Atkins. But what, Mark, what were your highlights for the game tonight? Um, look, I, I, I like the way um, that Sturt stayed composed when the pressure was on them. I said it before; <clears throat> it's different when you've got a, a loaded bases and you're the batting team. You've got loaded bases. The pressure is then on the fielding team. The highlight for me was the way that Sturt got out of that that, la that second to last innings. They got out of that the pressure after that little bit of a kerfuffle with the umpires and the out. They, they regained composure and then they put the pressure back on the well, the batting side and they got out of it. So to me it was an all-round good game. The scoreline I, I think is justifiable, 3-2. I liked the new pitcher for Walkerville. Um, she's throwing hard. I'd like to see her in a couple of weeks once she's settled in. Um, and then the young battery, uh, the young, you know, the, the young team from Sturt who actually used the bat and fought against those 107, 106 kilometre an hour pitches and weren't overawed by it. So it was a great game for me to watch uh, all, all round, to be honest with you, Kathy. Yeah, I agree. There's the way that uh, Sturt handled this uh, this new pitcher um, it just didn't it didn't seem to phase them at all. And young Zali Adams, with looks to me like about seven strikeouts for the game. Uh, was that's a, a mighty effort for someone again who's so young and, and she was so composed, especially when we had some um, sometimes when there was a lot of runners in scoring position or bases loaded, and um, yes, yeah, she, she just showed that um, that this is, is not an issue for her at all being here in A grade. Well, joining me is the statewide super player of the game, Pippa Atkins. Victor was three runs to two over the Cats. 
congratulations, it was a great game. Thank you, yeah, it was really good. We were a bit nervous going in, obviously, against the import pitcher, but the team, uh, we really batted well and got onto it early and really held them, so it was a really great game. Massive game for you tonight, three hits, you start in the field. Let's talk about that double play to end the game. The, the ball came at you like a rocket. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was a bit scared, but um, I got it and then did a shocking throw, but luckily Bell White had my back to make the double play, so it was a really good finish. We commented during the game of the quality of the game. Uh, you guys just were on top of the game the whole time for the Cats as well. They played mm. great softball tonight, yeah. so full credit to them, but you guys coming out victors, you came out of the blocks sharp and hard, scored two runs early against American import pitcher tonight, Dressick. Was that, what was the message from Young? Um, yeah, he just said that uh, just to trust ourselves and get our bats out there early and really don't be afraid of it and just it's just another pitcher, so really go at her. That's exactly what you did. You got three hits tonight. Now, we commented uh, as well earlier that all your hits came off your slap hitting. Yeah, so I've been working on it a lot this season and I guess that's the first game where they've really um, come off nicely, so it's good that they've uh, been starting to pay off. Great game from you tonight, Pippa, our statewide super player of the game. Sturt Falcons running out victorious over the Walkerville Cats. Three runs to two. Thanks for joining us here on Spacequake Sports. We'll see you on Saturday.